Oh Lord, oh my Lord, you've been, you've been really good to me, yeah. I was just driving in my car on the way to church and I started thinking, thinking. And I gotta say you be Lord knows you've been good to me yeah. When I was down Down to my last dime Anybody know about that? Huh? You made a way for me yeah. You made a way every time yeah. And for that reason I gotta say you brought me Hey Anybody know he brought you from a mighty long way? If you agree, let me hear you make some noise quiet. Come on. You've been a brother. You've been my father. Listen, you've been my sister. Lord knows you've been my brother too, yeah. Listen, you didn't leave me yet. But you stay right by my side Yes you did And when troubles came Lord you wiped the tears from my eyes Listen, I should have been dead Anybody with me after COVID Sleeping in my grave Hey, but you made You made all death You made it behave And for that reason I gotta say You brought me Anybody need to hit the same and I 
know that God's been good. Come on and clap your hands if you know he's been good. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Come on, let's have a look, church. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, can I say, I thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. I thank you, Lord. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul says, I thank you, Lord. Yeah. I thank you, Lord. I tell you, ain't no secret there what my God can do. What he does for us, he will do the same for you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everybody, praise the Lord. We bring you greetings from Maranatha Faith Temple, where our pastor is none other than Pastor Kathon Kelly. And hopefully you are excited on today. We are excited to be here on today. And we just give God all the glory, honor, and praise. First, we want to give honor to God and then honor to our pastor. And then honor to all of our members family, friends, uh, all of our guests and visitors. 
We say welcome to you. We say praise the Lord to you. And we honor God for you. And we are about to go into uh, prayer on tonight. Uh, we're going to have a short word of prayer. And then we're going to have our pastor come up and give us what God has given her. Go ahead and put your prayer request in the chat. Put your prayer request in the chat. And um, if we don't have time to call it out, uh, then we will uh, we will put it on the list. OK, so let's continue to keep our pastor lifted in prayer. Uh, let's uh, continue to keep uh, Pastor White and the Kirkendall, Kirkendall family lifted in prayer. Uh, Miss Deidre, Sister uh, Deborah Hingle, uh, also Sister uh, Mary Bean, Brother John Bean, Brother Jonathan O'Narrow. Uh, also uh, Miss Angela Tribble. Uh, we want to lift up Miss Tribble. Uh, let's continue to keep uh, Sister Tasha Torrance lifted in prayer. And just uh, all those who may be grieving, all those who uh, may be sick and afflicted, all those uh, who may need deliverance, whatever the situation is, let's continue to keep them lifted up in prayer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sister Deidre joined in with us. Praise the Lord. We're continuing to lift you up in prayer. Let's go ahead and pray. Like I said, go ahead and put your prayer request in the chat. Uh, also, like and share the broadcast. Go ahead and like and share the broadcast on tonight uh, so that others can uh, have the opportunity to join in with us. Also, uh, once we get finished praying, you can put your uh, you can put your testimony in the chat and give God praise for all that he has done. Let's go ahead and go before the throne of grace. Lord, we love you, God. We thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. We magnify your name. You're an awesome God and an awesome wonder. There is none other like it unto you. You can do anything but fail. God, all power is in your hands. What's impossible with man is possible with God. And Lord, you never go back on your word. God, you cannot lie. You won't let us down. And so, God, we're leaning, trusting, and depending on you. And we're seeking your face, coming before the throne of grace boldly in our time of need. But humble, God, as little children, we're coming before you, seeking your face, seeking uh, your righteousness, seeking uh, your word, your will, and your way, seeking the kingdom in the name of Jesus. Thanking you for everything that you've done. Uh, thank you, God, for, for Lord, for your mercy, for your grace, your love and kindness, your tender mercies. God, we say thank you. Thank you, our family. Thank you for keeping and covering us. In the name of Jesus, God, we ask that you will forgive us for every sin and transgression, sins and commission, commission, presumptuous sins, every word, every thought, every deed, everything that's not like you. We ask right now in your name, Lord, uh, that you would pay us and we forgive those who have done wrong against us. We put it in your hands and we ask that you would have mercy upon us, creating us a clean heart, renew a right spirit within us. God, we need you all tonight. God, prepare our hearts for the the, the word on tonight that's going to be taught. And Lord, so that the seed of the word can fall on good ground so we can produce fruit, much fruit and more fruit. Continue to touch our pastor, God. Lord, continue to strengthen, lead and guide and direct our pastor, God. Continue to give a word on time and in season. In the name of Jesus. Glory to your name, God. We ask right now your name, Lord, that you would meet past at the point of our need. In the name of Jesus, God, we ask that you would continue to test Sister Deborah Hingle in her body, uh, Miss Tribble in her body, uh, um, uh, Sister uh, uh, Deidre in her body. In the name of Jesus, Lord, continue to touch Sister Mary Bean, Brother John Bean, Brother Jonathan O'Narro. Lord, continue to touch them in their bodies. Uh, Lord, we're praying, God, for uh, Lord for the healing virtue to flow, and Lord for not just to not just to heal, but to, to make whole. In the name of Jesus, Lord, continue to touch Sister Tasha Torrance, God. In the name of Jesus. Glory to your wonderful name, God. Lord, you are a healer. You are a deliverer. By your stripes, we are healed. And Lord, if it's not a healing that is needed on tonight, God, we ask God that you would just meet at the point of the need in the name of Jesus. Glory to your wonderful name, God. We ask and that you will continue, God, to touch all of our young people. Lord, we ask God that you will continue to touch 
Lord, all of our world leaders, Lord, continue to turn their hearts in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for the peace of Israel. And God, we pray for that you would intervene in the Ukraine and Russia of places in the name of Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. God, we ask right now in your name, Lord, uh, that you would, Lord, just continue to have your way in our life. God, you know what we stand in need of. God, continue to touch Pastor White and his family, the Kirkendall family, Pastor uh, Kelly and her family. Lord, continue, Lord, to touch the families uh, that are working. Uh, Lord, you would give them the grace and the strength they need to get through this time of bereavement. In the name of Jesus, glory to your wonderful name, God. Lord, we are looking unto you, Lord, for the manifestation of your glory. We're looking unto you Hallelujah, Lord, for answered prayers. Lord, we're looking unto you. You are God that can see, a God that can hear, a God that can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Hallelujah. And Lord, there's none like it unto you all beside you, and neither can there be in the name of Jesus. You, you are our creator, our redeemer, our way maker. And so, God, we're standing on your word. God, we know, uh, Lord, that you are God and God alone. We know that you are a reward of them that diligently uh, seek you in the name of Jesus. Glory to your name. God continue to remind us that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. Help us, God, to continue to keep the whole armor of God on in the name of Jesus. Lord, continue, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, to just to have your way in our life, in our family life. Oh, God, we need you on tonight. Lord, we need you, Jesus, so that we can be more like you. God, you said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Our soul will make her boast in you, Lord. God, we're going to give you all the glory, honor, and the praise. How we're coming Lord, with all of our burdens, all of our cares, uh, Lord, we're coming, huh? hallelujah, knowing God, huh? hallelujah, Lord, that you've asked us to lay it uh, at your feet. Huh? And so, Lord, whatever we're going through, whatever we're facing, huh? God, we give it to you and ask you to have your way. Lord, we're giving it to you. Huh? Hallelujah. Lord, asking you to move in a mighty way. Huh? Lord, we're giving it to you. Huh? Lord, we don't want to worry. Huh? Lord, we don't want to fret. Huh? But Lord, we want to give it to you on tonight. Huh? In the name of Jesus. Huh? Glory to your name, God. Huh? Hallelujah. Lord, we're trusting. Huh? Lord, we stand believing. Huh? God, we stand. Huh? And Lord, we don't want to doubt. Huh? In the name of Jesus. Lord, we, uh, Lord, if we have any unbelief, huh? Lord, help down our unbelief. We believe and help down our unbelief. Huh? In the name of Jesus. Huh? Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Teach us, Lord, to pray. Lord, continue to give us what to pray and what to say. Hallelujah, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, speak to us, uh, uh, Lord, that we may continue to speak uh, and speak life. Uh, and that, Lord, that we will continue, God. Uh, hallelujah, Lord, to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all of the praise. Uh, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, we love you all tonight. Uh, we love you all tonight. Uh, hallelujah, Lord, you've been so good. Uh, you've been so kind. Uh, you've been so merciful. Uh, glory Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah, Lord. We couldn't have uh, made it this far without you, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we wouldn't have, uh, Lord, come this far. Lord, if it had not been uh, for your mercy, for your grace, your love and kindness, uh, Lord, your tender mercies. Uh, thank you, God, for the healing. Uh, thank you for the deliverance. Uh, thank you, Jesus, uh, Lord, for moving in our life in a mighty way. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we need you on tonight. Uh, we need you on tonight, Jesus. Uh, hallelujah, Lord, all those who are traveling. Uh, Lord, we're praying for traveling grace and mercy as we are, Lord, back in our building. Uh, and Lord, to praise you uh, and to worship you, Lord, collectively uh, in the name of Jesus. And all those, uh, Lord, who are virtual, uh, Lord, who cannot be here on tonight. Uh, Lord, we thank you, uh, Lord, for allowing them to be with us virtually, uh, Lord, to worship uh, and to praise. Uh, and Lord, to receive uh, all of what you have, uh, Lord, for us uh, on tonight. Uh, hallelujah. And to the, for the days to come uh, and for the days that have passed. Uh, Lord, we thank you uh, and we praise you. We glorify you. We magnify uh, your wonderful name. Uh, hallelujah. And God, we're looking up. Uh, 
Lord, we're looking, God, you said, um, Lord, to look up because our Redeemer joyeth nigh. And we look to the hills from which cometh our help. Our help coming from you, Lord, which created the heavens uh, and the earth. Uh, glory to your name. Uh, hallelujah. God, in my sea, and according to your will, in my son, and according to your way, God, let it be so. Uh, Lord, let it be so, God. Everything uh, that we did, Lord, you say, you give us the very desires of our heart. Uh, Lord, we want to desire what you desire. And uh, we want our will to be your will. Uh, our righteousness as filthy rags. And so, God, Lord, we're looking unto you. We're looking unto you, God. Hallelujah, Lord. We don't want to continue to be the same. Lord, we want to have the mind of Christ in the name of Jesus. Glory to your wonderful name, God. And, Lord, we be careful, Lord, to give all the glory, all the honor, and all in Jesus' name. We pray, let your blood. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Once again, if you're just now joining in with us, we bring you greetings from Maranatha Faith Temple, where our pastor is none other than Pastor Captain Kelly. And we thank our pastor. Uh, go ahead and share the broadcast. Go ahead and share. Uh, we, are, we have been experiencing some technical difficulties. Uh, we are working uh, so that uh, it frees up, so we know that it is freezing, um, and we know uh, uh, that we're having these difficulties. So, uh, bear with us, stay with us. It should uh, clear up. It may freeze up some more throughout, but don't leave us. Pray for us uh, that 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 would not continue to happen. And that wouldn't continue to happen. And so uh, we want you to uh, we want you to uh, definitely pray with us and stay with us. But go ahead and like and share. Also, put your put your uh, your praise up, uh, your praise uh, in the chat, your testimonies in the chat. Uh, uh, we want to give God praise, glory, and honor uh, in in uh, in while we're in the building, while we're uh, on live, uh, we're virtual. We just want to give God the praise. So if you're uh, if you're here in the building and you want to give God the praise and go ahead and pray, praise your God uh, virtually, come on, let's give God the praise on tonight. Give God the praise on tonight because we know that he is a prayer answering God. He is a prayer answering God. So we believe that on tonight. We believe it on tonight and we're looking. Thank you. Thank you, Mama, Sister Hingle. Thank you for putting your testimony up on tonight. And we bless God. We bless God. And we thank God for being a provider, for being a protector. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Yes, Sister Ask you, praise the Lord. Uh, for Yes, for a uh, more sunny day. One more day. Thank you, Jesus. Lesson. A lot of people not not getting uh, sunny days. So we thank God for the sunny days. We thank God for it. Uh, I thank God uh, for just allowing us. Uh, my grandmother, my grandmother, who is who I know is watching with us. She's 92 years old. And so we thank God uh, for allowing her to have another birthday, another birthday. Hallelujah. We just, we pray, we praise God for allowing uh, to have the longevity of life. Isn't that wonderful? And it's amazing. We can only hope if the Lord tarry uh, that we would be able uh, to see 92 years old. All right. That is it. The prayer clinic is over. Prayer. Go ahead and put your praise up. I'm about to go ahead and bring our pastor in. Uh, none of the pastor Captain Kelly. I want everybody to uh, say praise the Lord. Uh, to praise the. Uh -oh. I want everybody to say praise the Lord to our pastor on tonight in Jesus' name.
praise the Lord to everybody. We thank and praise the Lord for just being here this evening in our MFT Bible class. Amen. 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 I have some handouts. And these particular handouts, they are going to be very valuable to you in building up your um, library. I would say, I would say, I'm going to ask, um, All right, now we're a little scarce here tonight, but if we, if you can move up a little closer, just a little closer, we're gonna get started. I'm, I'm just gonna. And when you receive your handout, just let me know when, you, when you have your handout, when you get your handout. And like I said, this is very, very important. You can build your library with this. This is something that you can use to do research out also. And um, we're going to do a recap concerning who's manning your pot, who's managing your tripod. Just pretty. I hope everybody get a handout. And I'm going to read the little uh, focus point here. And as I read it, I want you to fill in the box. I'm going to ask everybody to come in so that we can get started. And everybody should have a handout. I thank and praise the Lord for uh, Evangelist Ward helping out with my slides here. Amen. I hope I can go through here. I hope I have enough copies for everybody. If we have a okay. So we're gonna do a, a a focus point and we're gonna ask everybody to kind of tune in, get your paper and your pencil, your notebook. Now, there's no way on earth you come to church or Bible class and retain everything that you have learned and be able to regurgitate it through the week after Satan tries to beat up on you. It's almost impossible. So Bible class, please bring your notebooks and your pencils. And you need to take note. You need to take notes. Because you need to know these. These are facts. And you wonder sometimes how the evangelists and the pastors are able to teach us. Because when they came to Bible class, they took notes. And they very adamant a bit about being here on Bible class night. So now, let me get started. And I'm going to take my time. And I hope this works. This first time I'm doing this. I hope it works. Maybe the first time. All right. Oh, uh, thank you, Ms. Downey. If you could. I don't lost it. Tell us about the slides again. Okay, thank you. I'm going to read. I'm going to fill in the blanks as I read. If I'm going too fast, let me know. Okay, it says... Lucifer, one of God's 
and then dot it down as quick as you can. Lucifer, one of God's blank in heaven, coveted. I hope I ain't giving you the. Am I going too fast? Blank, the magnificent powers of God. As he waited. as well as his masterpiece of creating the heavens and the earth. Okay. And then they have the slot up front. I mean, up top. Okay. Now, you want, you want me to uh, read it for you? I have images on up it. Can you read that for me? Okay. Pastor. She's going to read Caster. No, I got something else. I got something else. Okay. Eventually, I'm going to read this. Lucifer. Follow this. Lucifer, one of God's blank. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that would be angels. Did you put it in a little... On the line, angels. Now I'm asking somebody to give, uh, as as our uh, members come in, give them a sheet. I want you to keep up with these sheets. They are very important. It's part of you building the, your knowledge in regards to salvation. All right. Luf Lucifer's one of God's blank as angels. Uh huh. In heaven, coveted would be the answer. Okay. The magnificent powers of God. All right. As well as his masterpiece of creating the heavens and the earth and the fullness thereof. The greatest of all sin. Lucifer wanted to subdue the creation of man to, and put this in there, worship and serve him. Worship and serve him. That should be the third answer. In addition, Iniquity, that's your next answer. Iniquity was found in Lucifer and the Lord cast him out. as well as one-third of the other angels. And he influenced out of heaven to the ground like a bolt of lightning. So, so Lucifer in, influenced these angels. And then as she said, they were cast out of heaven just like a, just like a bolt of lightning. All right? All right. After Satan, so that answer is after Satan. Well, after Satan... Became the prince. So the answer is prince. And the next answer is of this world. And the prince of the air. Satan's vengeance was to kill, steal, and destroy God's workmanship 
and masterpiece by beguiling and deceiving the woman, Eve. To disobey God's. So that answer would be by beguiling and deceiving the woman, Eve. By beguiling and deceiving the woman, Eve. To disobey God, explicit command. Not to eat of the forbidden fruit. Of the knowledge of good and evil. Because of their disobedience. Is she going too fast? Okay. God withdrew his spirit. That should be the answer, spirit. From them and cast them out of the garden of Eden. And assign an angel with a flaming sword. to prohibit them from returning into the garden and partaking of the tree of life, which would cause man to live forever. So that should be, which would cause man in that blank to live forever. However, they did not die a physical death. They died a spiritual death. Nevertheless, they were physically mobile without the spirit of God living within then. Every child born of Adam and Eve were also born of a dead spirit. Because of this, man is operating out of a dead spirit. Satan's own man soul. Satan owns man soul. Did y'all get it? Yeah. Say got it. Yeah, it. Did y'all get it? Yeah. All right then. Now we're gonna do uh if I can, we just did uh the recap. <clears throat> we were talking about a tripod or triad, either one tripod or triad. I'm gonna try to go by the slides, okay. <clears throat> They were physically mobile, as Evangelist Anna said. Their soul died, but the body didn't die. Amen. Do you understand that? If you don't, raise your hand, because I can stop. I want y'all to understand this. Man is composed of three parts. And, and you might say, why does she keep going over and over this? Because I wanted to sink in your mind, in your heart, that... Last week, we were asked if we going to manage the tripod. And then after Adam and Eve partook of the forbidden fruit, God cast them out of the Garden of Eve. And this is kind of informing. I want you all to talk back to me. So now, I'm asking now, what happened when God cast Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden? What happened? Somebody raise a hand and talk real loud. What happened when they were cast out of the Garden of Eden? 
Y'all want me to go back and read it all over again? What happened when God cast Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden? All of it. Nobody knows. All right, stand up and tell me. Praise the Lord. That's right. That's right. Very good. Very good. God withdrew his spirit from Adam and Eve. We just read that. He withdrew his spirit from Adam and Eve. Now, as far as the tripod is concerned, what do you think happened to the tripod? Three plus what equal what? That's correct. Three minus one equal what? Two. So they're no longer a tripod. What are they? What are they? They are what? Tupac. I'm not talking about the singer Tupac. <laughs> so we got a lot of Tupac walking around here. Duo two. Because God drew the spirit out of Adam and Eve. When he drew the spirit, then it, there were two entities. That's the what? Body and the what? Soul. The body. Y'all want me to go back and read all this again so it can get down in your spirit? Body and the soul. Because see, God's spirit is gone. So now it says, the meat of the matter of fat. The Greek word for the spirit is Puno, or uh, you know how you say they have pneumonia? Right. Pneumo? Right. Pneumonia? Yeah. It refers to the breath, your breath, your breathing, your lung. Right. It refers to part of man, the spirit man, that connects and communicates with God. Our spirit man differs from our soulish man because our spirit man is always, listen to this, the spirit man always he always point toward the exist ex, uh, ex, he point toward and exists exclusively for God, whereas our soulish man can be self-centered. What do I mean by that? The spirit man is God's mechanism of communicating with the soulish man, the whole tripod. He communicates. Man communicates back with God through the spirit man. If you pray, God hears that prayer through the spirit man. Amen. So it's sort of like a channel. Yeah. You talk to God and God talk to you. Now, in the Garden of Eve, there was everything that man could have imagined and wanted. But now what persuaded them to disobey God? It's a fact that God wanted to prove to man, you have choice. Right now we got choice. Yeah. If he had Adam and Eve, choice, choice. He had his given us choice today. Do you know Abraham, if he had not chose to really do what God told him to do, take his son upon the mountain and, and sacrifice him, do you know if Abraham did not do that, we would be in a world of trouble. Now, something that's shocking. Do you know the angels in heaven that are encamped about you, keeping you? Have choice still? That's scary to me. I got to get an amen on that. They keeping you, but they have a choice. They can decide to let you just have it and disobey God. But God's mighty power and majesty won't let that happen. He's not going to let it happen, so don't, don't get all frightened and scared. So the soulish man and the flesh exist now. Have I lost anybody? 
While everyone's soul is fully active, not everyone's spirit is. Why? The spirit is gone. Because when Adam fell, the spirit died. The spirit man, listen, God dwells in the spirit. That spirit man. He dwells, he designed that spirit man for his inhabitation. Y'all got it? So when, when he withdrew his spirit, what happened? No connection. And God said, hasta la vista. And you have, you have now the dupar, tupar. That's the body and the flesh. Okay, so. Body, I'm sorry. Body and soul. Only in Christ is the spirit reconnected and reconciled. This is only by the new birth. Okay. At one time, we were separated from God, but now Christ has made us God spring again by his death. Colossians 1, 21 through 22. And we emphasize also, according to Acts 2, 38, the water baptism in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. So you got a lot of people that are walking around with just the body and the soul because God withdrew his spirit from man when Adam and Eve disobeyed. Now, God has a, a worldwide altar call yeah. because man's headed to hell. He said, well, I, I, I created you. I gave you everything you wanted, everything that you need. He said, but y'all didn't appreciate it. I can't dwell. God will not dwell in sin. He doesn't want no part of sin. So he said, uh-uh, I got to come on out of here. I'm gone. All right, so don't you remember we talked about that soulish man, the attributes of the soulish man? What are some of them? Come on, talk loud. Choice, reasoning, decision, emotions, intellect. All of that is in the what part man. Now, God's very intelligent. He won't withdraw himself out of man's realm unless he has a way of escape. So the reasoning, the choice, the decision, intellect, all of that comes into focus when God allow man to witness an individual. That individual that's soulish is going to use his reasoning. He's going to use his intellect. He's going to use his decision to make a choice. All of that in place so that man can't choose him. He didn't take the spirit out and man is just lost. He had all that put in place so that we can be saved. If he had taken all of that out, we wouldn't be sitting here today. I, 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 I would say amen. By the third mere fact, you use all of those mechanisms to come up when someone wins to you. You reason. You had a decision to make, and you had the intellect to make a choice. So there is no excuse for anyone not being saved today. Okay, the, uh, the Colossians 1, 21 and 22. I'm sorry. It says, and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your minds by wicked works, yet now have what? Reconciled. How he has what? Reconciled us, right? <clears throat> in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable, unreprovable in his sight. When he died on the cross, this happened. And I thank and praise him for it because he paid a price that I couldn't pay. You can pay. Nobody could pay. Amen. Now, I hope I'm right on time with the slide, with the slides here. It says, who's managing your tripod triad? It's your choice now. It's a continuation. Satan's objective. Satan wanted to prove to God that he has supreme powers. Because of the death of man's spirit, 
which God destined for him set to abide in, communicate, and allow God to instruct and teach men as how to serve, glorify, and worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Man man choose to disobey because the whole world would be cursed. Because of the sin of Adam and Eve, every man born of them were born with a dead spirit with the absence of God dwelling therein. Your sin could affect everybody. Do you know that? Just because you sin doesn't mean that other people won't feel the effects of it. When Adam and Eve, it threw the whole world in a chaotic situation. And everybody born of, every child born of Adam and Eve, they were born with a dead soul. Amen? All right, now, so we got the body and the soul without the flesh. Do your, your what? Uh, do part. You do, your do part. Right. Now, because the soul is self centered, follow along with me. Because that soulish man is self centered, and you have this man that's standing up here with, with two ears. I don't think y'all, yeah, you do. Satan's job is to influence the flesh of man, not the soul. He influencing the flesh. And see, God, the devil watches us closely. He watches us. And when he sees that we are in need of him fulfilling what our fleshly thoughts are. He's Johnny on the job. i get to it. He's going to send demons after you to tempt you, to try you. And if you haven't been fasting and praying and in your word, you're going to fall susceptible to sin's tricks. Satan tries to influence the flesh to cause all to sin. He influences the flesh. Now, it's a correction. All souls belong to God. It doesn't belong to Satan. Put that correction in. It does not belong to Satan. All souls belong to God. So, repeating again, Satan influences the flesh. That's why I tell you to stay in your word. That's why I tell you to fast and pray. And God will send Tim. Let me tip nobody. They allow the devil to do things to you in order to for you to exercise resistance. How will you ever be strong unless you exercise? Satan influences your flesh in order to try your to, for your flesh to influence your soulish man. All things in your soulish man will be activated and triggered. If you are in your word and you're strong in your word, then when that activation comes, that, that flesh, that, that soulish man is going to reason. Now, I better not do this. I better not do that. It is through the prayer of the prayers of the saints and God's mercy and his, his mercy and his will that not, nobody really perishes. But it's through God's mercy that he keeps the unsaved every day. He keeps us every day. Oh, I can get to shouting up here. Satan influences the flesh. The flesh influences the soul. Then the soul processes all of that and comes with a decision. If you've been reading fast and the saints pray tomorrow, I understand this. Now, Friday, don't pray for me, mine, all that. You pray for an evangelist. Anna has some beautiful little, I guess, a little strips of paper asking you to pray for different parts of the world business, the sick, the afflicted, government. And I hope she'll pass them out tonight. Make it a point of prayer. Don't just choose tomorrow to pray. You pray every day. I'm going to keep going over it until you get it. And then when you get it, you can say, I got it. Or just say, got it, got it, got it. Now the two part. 
two part man consists of the soul and the flesh because God has withdrawn his spirit. Satan is diligently working through the flesh of men to cause his soul to sin every day, every minute. If you don't stand God over your heart and over what comes in your ears and your eyes, you say to say, oh, I got it. The two-part man has no power to resist Satan's influences. Listen to this. The soulish part of you don't have the power to do this without God's spirit. But ye shall receive the gifts of the Holy Ghost, right? But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come on you, right? Into your soul. The two-part man has no power to resist Satan's influences except through God's grace, his mercy, and intervention through prayer. That soldier means something else. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have what? And that they might have it what? More? Now, Who's managing your tripod? Try it. It's your choice now. Since you understand, and I've been on this, because I don't want you to get it. Thank you, Sister Askew. I've been on it because I want you to get it. So who's going to manage your tripod? No, the spirit is gone. So who's going to manage it? No. Who's going to manage that? I didn't say, well, now with the tripod, you're right because the spirit of God is present. You're right. But the dupod, who's managing that dupod? In other words, you have hired him because you're going to adhere to what he's Doing to the flesh to intrigue you, to influence you. That's if you don't have a Holy Ghost now and the spirit is gone. He's influencing people now. And he's doing everything he can to cause man without the Holy Ghost to sin. And if you say, oh, no, that's not true. I can go pull some stats. Somebody's shooting right now. Somebody's killing right now. Somebody's doping up right now. That's because of the flesh. Satan influences the flesh to do these things. The soulish part will adhere to it because the soulish part doesn't have Jesus in his soul, the body, to keep him from sinning. And then you say, well, what about the, the person that has the Holy Ghost and they still sinning? It's because of what Adam and Eve did, disobedient. But is one thing about it, the difference is, and you listen to me carefully, when you give your life to God and God is your master, he is your savior, you, that selfish man and God within that selfish man, you can allow Satan to influence your flesh. See, you send out little cues, but Satan wants to attack you. You send out cues. He watches you closely. He watches you closely. If you are a wanting, then you're going to dress a wanting. And then you're going to let a, a Satan trick you into thinking that you got it all the girl together. Man, you so fine. Girl, you so fine. And you walk around here think you all that, showing everything. Satan said, okay, I'm going to tell you something. There are people with one side of their brain. And you out here putting it all on the on display. Satan said, I got you. I got you. Don't worry. I have you. He'll send his demons. Look at this woman here. He's talking to that woman. And if that
the woman. Devils and demons to attack you. Yeah. Stay out the devil's territory. Yeah. Getting out the car. That demon or influence somebody to attack you because you put it on display. Yeah. Oh, y'all, I'm talking yeah. truth. And furthermore, God say, you're my vessel. I don't need you. I don't need you allowing Satan to tempt you. Oh, that's supposed to be gone. Do you remember all of the attributes in Galatians, the fifth chapter? See, we need to keep that before us. You need to ask your soul, am I thirsty after? Are my hands going where they're not supposed to? Are my eyes going where they don't need to? Satan got demonic forces that he watches you. This world is not safe. I will let people know I'm safe. I love a, a risen, I serve a risen Savior. Don't flirt with Satan. Oh, y'all don't understand that. Don't flirt with him because he is Johnny on the job and he will take care of your so-called needs. He will keep you. This is Elder Kelly. This is Elder Kelly. He will keep you longer than you want to stay. Take you further than where you want to go. And make you pay more than you want to pay. Remember, your soulish man has... Oh, listen to this. Your soulish man has a recorder that records everything. That soulish man in you. That thing records everything. It records the day you thought about seeing it now. It has been taught to us down through the years. The bird can fly over your head, but don't let the bird land in, in your head. Don't let him land there. That's sin. Whenever you think of it and it comes to your mind, it is your job to cast it out. And ask the Lord to keep it out. But as soon it is, as it comes to your mind and you enact upon it, it becomes ice cream. Don't flirt with, with Satan. Don't flirt with him. There are some people who have given testimonies. They were so ecstatic because this person looked at them. The person, they know, the devil knows how to woo you. He knows how to beguile you. This happened to this person. The person he took way out in the country and beat her and left her for dead. It's just by God's mercy and the prayer of the saints, God was able to redeem and restore her. So your soulish man, if you don't believe it, you do some research. It's recorded. It's recorded. So why does why is the soulish man recording everything? All that you do say, it will play it back on judgment day. You can't argue with your soul now. I didn't do that. I went at uh, Jack's house that time of night. Your soul will play it back to God. Every minute, every day. You, whatever you do in life is being recorded by the soul. Did we say the soul have the memory? It has the memory? Intelligence? It has a Geiger counter? Navigator? It'll tell you what day and street and time. See, when Jesus knelt down, on the ground when this, they found this woman in adultery or fornication, he started writing on the ground. They were so glad to bring that woman to Jesus. They didn't know what to do. And, and, and all of them, yeah, you know your law said this, that, and other. Jesus didn't say a word. He just kept on writing. And I'm saying this. See, it was Frank, James, Jim, John, 
And then him when Jesus started writing Frank, Jim, Dunn, Frank on March the 25th, Dunn, 230, June the 5th, Mark, December the 25th, should have been at church, but you know what they did? They got up, cast their little stones, and went because they knew if they had challenged Jesus, Jesus would have told off on them. So they didn't say nothing. So this soul is going to play everything back on judgment day. Brother Devontae, say it. Don't do it. When that lustful demon comes your way and you think you're so fine and pretty and you got to advertise that you flirting with Satan. And then he's going to take you up on it. And he knows just how to do it. They said Satan is very, the Bible said he's subtle. He's very, uh, my husband told a story about Devon, Dev, what, what, what was his name? Devante. Levante. That old lady said, oh, he is the nicest and the sweetest little man you ever want to meet. That was the devil. He knows how to woo you. He does. Don't do it. When that, that lust for desire comes upon you, think about it. Every sin receives what? So, Brother Devontae, don't do it. Thank you for being on time. I would get rid of the t-shirt that says, just do it. Because you're triggering your mind in the soul that you're in. That when Satan comes knocking at your door, just do it. You're programming yourself. Thank you, Sister Ask you. That's sending out a flag that it's all yours, Satan. Come get it. Oh, y'all think I'm I'm joking. He's he's gonna come or get me. You know, messages, although you might be innocent, messages can get crossed up with the intentions since Satan is the prince of this world and air. Do you know that? He's the God just gave him that little bitty power to be the prince of the world and heir. And my husband taught a long time ago. He uses Satan as a, a, a what's that? A, a whipping boy. He he allows Satan to be turned loose on you when you don't get it. Ha! <laughs> you don't get it. God, uh, uh, Jesus said, "How long am I going to stay with you? How long?" You know, a lot of times. Parents talk to their children in code. God was talking to his disciples in code because he didn't want everybody knowing everything. He said, if I say the father is in me and I'm in the father, oh, they were very adamant about Jesus saying he was God. Well, Jesus was talking to his disciples and they seemingly, a sister died, Dick and his daughter, they couldn't pick up on it. And Jesus got upset. How long? I think he was nice. So since Satan is the prince of this era, you may not be sending out the message, but I sure wouldn't be wearing the implication. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. It's your choice now. It says, 2 Corinthians 5 and 10, uh, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in the body. Everything that you have done in your body, it doesn't go away. It's being recorded within that soulish man. And when you stand before the judgment seat, you're going to be rewarded. Not for sin, not for you going out and sinning. See how many, how many back in my day, the men and boys just they used to keep tally of how many women they could just mutilate. I'm sorry, and they thought they were king of the hill. 
but the soulish part of you keep up, it keeps up with you, what you do. And that body, it comes back. That's why when you sin and you just abuse yourself, that body will mourn and the body would tell the soul, hey, you, I have had enough. And then that soulish part start reasoning with its intellect and its choice. And then it start making the decision, I need to be saved. I need Jesus. On my, I need Jesus. Now remember, when you get out there and you think nobody's watching and you think nobody knows, and you're taking God into that relationship of sin. Remember, the soulish is recording that. And you can't argue with God. Amen. Amen. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Least at any time we should let them slip. That's why I said, don't come up in here sitting and listening to me. You better get a pencil and a piece of paper and write this down. Now, if you come in just to... I, uh, a thought came to my mind. You ripping and running all day. You ripping and running, and when you get to church, you sitting on the soft pew and you just relaxing. And you can, you counting how many pizzas you're gonna buy for the week, how many neck bones you're gonna cook. You ain't heard none of the pastors. on the afterburners and say, Lord, what do you want me to do? Amen. Don't be sitting there sucking up his breath and you ain't thinking about him after he has given you and blessed you. That ain't right. That ain't right. Here I am passionately praying for you to get healed. And I don't even see you at church, Bible class or nothing. It's all that soulish man that soulish man self sinner is all for me and nobody else now me if you get that you ask god to take it from you he said you know you ought to take the more earnest heed your mind is like a, a, a little thing that strains spaghetti it's a colander, a lot of holes. Your man got a lot of holes in it. It'll forget. For if the world by angels will stand fast, see those angels don't play. Don't get entangled with an angel. And every transgression and disobedience receives a just recompense of that is to Hebrews 2, 1 through 3. Now, it's saying if the angel in heaven, if they are really taking account of this, what about you? What about me? You see that man right there? He's listening. He said, wait a minute now. Wait. What part of this man is functioning? Is everybody in agreement? How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation would at the first end, uh, which at, at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? 
miracles. God will not leave himself without a witness. He will confirm every word that he puts forth. Now, the word has come to him, and he's thinking, but I just, uh-uh, I don't, I don't, she goes over this all the time. I don't need to hear this. I can repeat this backwards. Can you? And are you paying attention? See, there's the devil and there's the angel. And he has to make a choice. He is a two-pod trying to make a choice. That's two-pod. The characteristics of the souls are the mental abilities. Choice, decision, intellect, reasoning, character. Your character will tell you what time it is with your soul. Did you know that? Feelings. Now, Pastor Ward's grandmother, she is the sweetest person. She is so sweet. It's because she does sweet things all the time. She's just engaged in things, helping people, loving people. That's what we should be. Her character tells who she is. She's, she's beautiful. The mental abilities, your choice, decision, intellect, reasoning, character, your feelings. That's why you got to watch your feelings. Don't let people hurt your feelings and, 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 and what have you. You better, the more, I, I tell you this. If your feelings are always getting hurt, God going to send you something to toughen them up. See, I ain't, I'm not just saying it. I have experienced it. Uh, Evangelist Stephanie has a friend. You do something to her. She said, oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's what I want to be. Oh, okay. See, I got a big hell, a God in heaven to take care of you. Again, the soul is a recorder as well as a great bookkeeper. <laughs> if every sin receives a just recompense of reward and you are sinning, that means that that, that soul is, he's a bookkeeper. He's charging just like uh, eating too much. That's $50, $50. You're not reading your, your Bible like you should. 75. He, I'm just using that as an example. It keeps up with all the many times you have sinned and the price you will have to pay and will automatically run a grand total when you stand before the Lord. That soul is going to run a grand total during your appearance at the judgment seat. That don't see it sound good, do you? It doesn't, it doesn't jail well, right? Just remember the soul will never, 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 ever die. Your body is, oh, I got something good to tell y'all. The body will die, but the soul, it will live forever. It is a recorder. It keeps very good records of accounts. Peter 3 and 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with firm heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. The works therein. The only thing that's going to survive is your soul. Y'all don't believe that. The soul is going to survive. I've been doing a lot of reading and what have you. The body is so wonderfully and uniquely made that when you receive the Holy Ghost, you know, it's a scripture that says, I think it, 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 I, I forgot exactly where it is, but it says that your body may be preserved, your soul, your body and all that. Can you get that scripture for me? that it will be preserved. The Lord gave me this understanding. You listen to me carefully. Whoever gets it, I want you to read it out loud. When you receive the Holy Ghost, Jesus comes into your body, your soul, 
His spirit is deposited there. You got it. Somebody has it. Read it. And you follow with me. And I'm getting ready to close now. Okay, wait, stop. He sanctifies you. How does he sanctify you? He sanctifies you by setting you apart after you receive the Holy Ghost, the water baptism in Jesus' name. Then you become sanctified. Amen. Amen. Y'all, come on, talk to me. When he comes into your dead soul, your dead spirit, your body, Read that again. Now it's God of peace. As God, listen. You receive the Holy Ghost and the water baptism. Then all three parts holy. And I pray God. Uh huh. Your whole spirit. Listen. Your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless. Unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Turn to Psalms 121. Read that. Now, when the Holy Ghost comes into your tabernacle, he's a preserver. Amen. Oh, you ought to be, you ought to be. He preserves that. He preserves your soul. He yes. preserves your body. He preserves the spirit because he's in there. Yes. Listen to this. Listen to this. I will lift, lift up, up my eyes, eyes unto the hills. hills. From which cometh my help. Uh-huh. My help cometh from the Lord, Lord which, which made heaven and earth. earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be bruised. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. Uh-huh. Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. hand. The, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Uh -huh. The Lord shall preserve Stop. When you are saved and you go down in that ground with the Holy Ghost, read on. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. All right. He shall preserve thy soul. What? Shall what? Preserve thy soul. Uh huh. Come on. The Lord shall preserve thy going out. Uh huh. And thy coming in. Okay. From this time forth and even forevermore. Glory. He's a preserver. He's a preserver. I'm going to tell you something. It's a revelation. When your body goes down into the ground and Jesus' spirit is within your tabernacle, your body, soul, and spirit, they, scientists say, is your body glow. Yes, yes. Oh. When he comes, he has preserved you, and that's how you're going to get up. But, but he revealed to me the body is going to be turned back into dust. Well, how is it that he is going to preserve the body? Because, see, when he comes, he's going to give you a new body. All right. The old body is going to rot and go away, but you he's preserving your body in the grave. He's preserving your body. Did he just say that? He's going to give you a celestial body. And that body will never die. It won't feel pain. Oh, I was just shouting when I, 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 he, he revealed that to me. The natural body is going to, if you read Thessalonians, it's going to tell you about this body. Now, on the other hand, he showed me. It's going to be preserved. So when he comes, he's going to give 
a new body. Don't you remember that there was, I think it was Ezekiel. They threw a man on the grave where the bones were and everything. Elijah, thank you. What happened to the body? Do you know that you have magnetic fields? God is dealing with you now. The Holy Ghost is a preserver. God is in there. He's talking to you. You got, you got a preserver where can nothing bother, touch, or harm you. Oh, yeah. You know, sometimes we can be sleeping. We just take it for granted. But God said he preserves me, and I thank God for that. Because I tell you, when time comes for me to get out of here, you don't know what you're going to entail between earth and heaven getting out of here. Do you think Satan might want to attack you and make you stay here? It's gonna. That's why God is going to make it so quick. He has, he has to get us out of here. So I thank God I'm preserved. I'm preserved. I am preserved. Oh, I don't, uh, this is not our home. We are sojourners here. Go back over. Keep these notes. I know, I know our leadership is going to uh, keep it. Because, see, somebody might want to ask you. They're going to call you. Will you please come and teach a class? I, don't, I really don't quite understand about the, the flesh and soul and spirit. Now, how is he going to come back after my body when he said it's going to return to the dust? Now you know the answer. He's a preserver because he's going to put his body in that frame, that absent body. He, he's going to preserve the celestial body. This is exciting to me. I don't, know, I don't know about you all, but this is all that I have. This is all that I have tonight. My next session is a way of escape. I want I wanted someone to make me a mirror with, you know, the, the, the Bible says you must put on and take off. Generally speaking, you don't know, you really don't know what to pull off and take off, put on and take off. I want a mirror, a dressing mirror. Every morning you get up, all those characteristics that we found in I think it's Ephesians and Galatians all those bad characteristics I want you to work toward taking them off every day Amen. I want you to put on the fruit of the spirit and uh, I think it's Galatians also all of those good characteristics start undressing yourself and then start dressing yourself But flesh, flesh going to say, nah, thank you, thank you. Every morning you get up and then look, instead of taking a lot of drugs and stuff, start getting you some pills and take it three times a day. Now I should love thy neighbors, I see <laughs> Get your bottle eventually. I'll say, Mama, we ought to get a, a pill bottle. And just, I, I don't want nobody saying I gave them some pills and they took sick. Make yourself our own pill bottle and just pull from it three times a day. Look in the mirror, see if you really over, have overcome that particular thing. If not, double your dose. <laughs> see, this medicine you can't die off of. <laughs> This is all that I have. Our altar call pastor is going to come forth with the altar call and tell you how you must be. You got to be saved in order to get out of this world. I hope you took good notes tonight. I hope you go home and, and study it. May God bless you. In Jesus' name, let the blood cover. Amen. 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 Praise the, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. Praise Amen. You may be seated. Amen.
Praise the Lord to our viewing audience as well. We heard a mighty word from the Lord on tonight. Amen. In regards to our souls, the most important part of our being. Amen. We spend a lot of time working on this outward man. We spend a lot of time working on, on our jobs and things of that nature. But tonight we were encouraged to focus on the soul, the most important part of our being, the part that's going to have to stand before God one day, that part that's going to tell off on us that if the truth be told, it's already telling off on us. Amen. So tonight, if you are viewing and you heard tonight and you found yourself, as Pastor said, wanting, say, man, I really am in need of soul salvation. I'm in really in need of having my soul saved. Call the number on the line, that, uh, the number that's on the screen um, at this time. Please call it because someone will be there to pray with you and to point you in the direction of how to get your soul saved. Nicodemus came to Jesus asking him one thing and Jesus told him another thing. He said, unless you're born again, Jesus cut right through the chase. Unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless you're born of the water and of the spirit, you cannot enter in. Well, the apostles picked up on those teachings and Peter on the day of Pentecost told some people who asked him, what must we do? And he said, repent in Acts 2 and 38, uh, every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Notice water baptism in the Bible is in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Some people say, well, I was baptized, but I was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Is there a difference? Yes, it's, there is a difference. Jesus commanded that repentance of sins and remission and repentance of sins be taught in his name. Amen. And therefore, that's what the apostles did. Well, to understand uh, uh, Matthew 28 and 19, you must understand what that name is that Jesus commanded there when he said, go ye therefore and baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. You must understand what the name is that is talked about. There is no S on name. Well, we all know the name of the son. Matthew 121 tells us the name of the son and she shall bring forth the son and thou shall call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. We know the son's name is Jesus. Well, St. John 543 tells us the name of the father. Jesus talking said, I am come in my father's name and you receive me not. But another shall come in his own name. Him you shall receive. Amen. Jesus name is uh, Jesus himself said, I came in my father's name. The son's name is Jesus. Therefore, the father's name is Jesus. Then the Holy Ghost, uh, St. John 14, 26 says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the father will send in my name. That's Jesus talking. See, the Holy Ghost was sent in that name. Acts 4 and 12 tells us that there is no other name under heaven given unto men whereby we must be saved. Amen. That name is Jesus. And that name is above every name. Amen. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. You want to go ahead and confess that Jesus is Lord now. You want to be born again now. You don't want to wait another day, another moment. People are dying every day. And the thing is, it's okay to die, but you want to die ready. Amen. Because if you die in the Lord, you're not dead. You are just asleep. Amen. So we encourage you to be born again. Call the number on the line if you need prayer and someone will be there to pray with you. We don't want anybody not to be saved. Amen. And if you are saved, continue, continue, continue. Ask God to help you to continue. Amen. Amen. So we're going to leave you in the hands of a just God. We thank and praise God for our Bible class on tonight. We encourage you to join us. We have another service on this Friday night, uh, extended family ministry. Advantage, Pastor Ward and Advantage Ward, they teach on Friday nights. You can join us Friday night. It's on Zoom. If you need that, send a message to us. We'll get that Zoom link to you. And this Sunday morning, Mother's Day, amen, we invite you to join us here live. If you're in the Memphis area, we're going to have a good time celebrating our mothers. And you can still join us virtually as well, amen. But I tell you, ain't nothing like being in person. If you can make the trip, come on down. Be with us. Amen. And we're going to look to celebrate our mothers because ain't nothing more special than our mothers. Amen. 
So we thank and praise God for you. We're going to dismiss you. We're going to let you go so that you will come back. Amen. So we're going to encourage you to stand. Those that are in the audience, stand. Uh, those that are at home, keep doing what you're doing. Now, if you're going to come live next week or you're going to come live this Sunday for Sunday school, prayer at 930, Sunday school at 10 promptly, come a little early so you can enjoy some of that coffee back there. Amen. Because once service starts, you might miss out. We don't want you to be disappointed. Amen. Amen. But we're going to pray and we're going to ask that God will continue to bless you. Amen. And I believe we have one announcement. Just one quick announcement. Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, tomorrow, as you can see there on the screen, is National Day of Prayer. So as you exit um, the sanctuary on the table, you will see prayer requests. And so we're asking if you can take one or two of those and tomorrow pray and concentrate on that prayer request all day. Because again, tomorrow is the National Day of Prayer. And also, Memorial Day is coming up at the end of the month, and we'll have an announcement concerning that as well. Amen. And if you would, pray for one of my customers, Angela Tribble. Got some really disturbing news medically. Amen. And she's in need of prayer. So please pray for her. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, it's in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you and praise you for the word of God on tonight. We thank you for the messenger. And Lord, we got the message on tonight. Help us, oh God, to receive and to begin at once, taking off and putting on, getting our pill bottles ready, oh God, every day. Lord, that you may continue to do the work that you have already begun in us because we want to be right before you and stand before you, oh God, in a pleasing manner. Bless each and every saint. Bless our pastor. Bless those in our viewing audience, oh God, until we shall see each other again. These are all the blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Jesus' name, amen. You may consider yourself dismissed. Don't fool me if you kept you just wave at me this morning. Hallelujah. Let's clap. We're going to have a good church. This is it. I want you to know that the Lord is me. Yes, Lord, I want you to know that He blessed me. Yes, He did. Is there anybody on this side of testify? Yes, I really want you to know uh, uh, yeah, yeah. He blessed me uh, Yes, he did I like this verse, it says Yes, God If you got food and clothing You ought to see Yes, I If you got the activities on your list
Wonder what? Wonder what? 